Dr. Dominic, I've asked Dominic to come and share. They, he and his, his wife, Charlie, they have put together, they're doing all of our filming for all of our breakouts and everything. And, and as I said, said, said before, that uh, it's gonna be all online in a couple of weeks afterwards. And he got the neatest uh, projector. And I, I told our board this morning, he just uh, signed a contract with Ron Howard well, what was Ron Howard? He was on uh, who? Opie. Opie. Yeah, he signed up with Opie. And who, who's a, a multi-cazillionaire. Multi but anyway, he signed up with his production company. They're doing a, fe a feature-length movie on uh, Murph the Surf or Surf the Murph. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Murph. And, <laughs> yeah. And, but the thing that I am, have been after him for years about furthering the, the application of, uh, of a study program and also helping us get a biblical world view. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about that. I, I'd like to uh, introduce you to a man named George uh, Barney. Have you ever heard his name, anybody? <laughs> okay, he is kind of what you might call the Gallup pollster of the Christian world. And I want to share some statistics with you. And he, what he does is he investigates people for their world view. Everybody has a worldview. We make a decision through the prism of the Bible, through whether we're Islam, whether we're Marxist, we have a worldview. So he wanted to find out what's happening in America. You're leaders, are you not? Yes. 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 So a biblical worldview is different than obviously the Marxist worldview and so forth. So, so he does a survey and he wants to find out how many Christians in, there are in America. I think it was 67%. Then he asked 55 questions to find out what they really thought, what they really believed, what their real world view is. Out of the 67% of people said they're Christians, how many of you do you think had a real world, had a, had a, world, a, a, a biblical world view? 6%. 6%, that's 20 million out of 255 adult Americans have a biblical world view. You wonder why the church is where it's at? That's right. That's right. You know, it's, 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 and that's, it's terrible. 37% of the, uh, the pastors have a biblical worldview. That means 63% do not believe the Bible is the inerrant word of God. They don't believe the, the 40 authors who wrote the Bible over uh, 2,000 years, all 66 books, said 3,800 times, I'm writing what God told me to write. It's God's word. Yes. Remember, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was of God, the Word was God, the Word was Jesus. That's how we're supposed to view the world, through that prism. Well, do you know the uh, pastors that do not have a biblical worldview think that it's a good book, but it's not something we should necessarily follow. They, uh, they don't believe in absolutes. You know, that values, clarification, situation, ethics is what our whole society is based on now, floating values. We know that. And uh, sex, these are what the ministers say. Well, if it feels good, if you feel good about it, go ahead, have sex, mm -hmm. all right, if you're unmarried. Um, and a Christian, the definition of a Christian, if you can believe this, is a good person. I'm a Christian. Don't ever ask a person if they're a Christian and think they're saved. Yes. Because they're not, most of them, 6% maybe. You know, you ask if they're a believer, believe in what? And then you go ahead and witness to them. Um, I always say, I mean, this started in the church, I don't know how long ago. We met somebody out front there, and she said, have a nice day. And I said, and you have a wonderful life. And if I don't see you again, I'll see you in heaven. <laughs> said, yeah, yeah. I said, you, you, are you going to go to heaven? Well, I'm not sure. Hey, listen, I can give you the username and the password if you want to get in. <laughs> it's free. It's free. The username is Jesus. <laughs> the password's the cross. It covers everything. It paid for all your... I'm not going to say it. Well, I'll drop you back. So that's where that started. It's going to be like five years. I have said that a hundred thousand times. Anyway, so a uh, Christian is a good person. Yeah, how many people we know a good person are Christians? Hmm? And so, you know, that's the problem we have to deal with. So I want to tell you a little story. I went to Italy in uh, 1999, visited my family. I have about 20, 40 members there in Tuscany. And uh, we got off the plane. I'm going to make this quick. Go to my my cousin's house, has her boyfriend there. He says, it's blood hurt. I said, well, you want me to pray for you? Nah, the priest said something about blood. 
I said, well, let me pray for you. And I, so I sat him down. I said, you want to be taller or you want to be shorter? <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what So he said, I don't know. I don't care. So I prayed for him. He instantly got healed. God healed him. I don't heal anybody. I just go obedient to God. Pray for somebody. Hey, if, if you don't get healed, don't blame me. If you get healed, blame, blame God. So he calls his father. His father is the head of the internet and travel for the Vatican. Wow. And he says, Domenico, Domenico, you must come stay with us. We go stay with him that night. He says, I'm going to a big conference. You must come with me. I said, well, what is it? He says, oh, you just come. Get dressed up. We go there, and they had the wealthiest people probably in Italy, all the cardinals, all the guys with the pomp and with circumcision. What we going? No. All of the, you know, the robes and all that stuff. So after about 30 minutes of them eating spaghetti and drinking vino, and everybody gets up and talks, and they go, you know, they're, they're half asleep. So uh, I said, well, what's going on here, Gianni? And he said, we're having a problem with church growth. Said, Isn't that where we are now? <laughs> we're having a problem with church growth. I said, really? I said, you know, I'm part of the Protestant church. We have the same problem. He says, Domenico wants to speak. And he puts me up. I do? No, Domenico, I'll interpret. You go ahead. So I get up and I say, you know, it's a funny thing. In the Protestant church, we go back to men. Luther, we go back to Wesley, we go back to this one, that one. But I said, the real problem is if we don't go back to the upper room, we're going to be very, very old Amen. men 10 years from today asking the same question. How does the church grow? Well, what did it grow? The apostolic church exploded with home, home to home meetings, you know? That's where people were actually, um, uh, you know, responsible to each other. That's where it happened. And in 380 AD, if you look at the seven churches, the third church, actually is where the church married the state. Mm -hmm. And when they married the state, they forbid in 380 AD for uh, Christians to meet in homes. Mm -hmm. And then the state church mm -hmm. began. And you know the challenges through the centuries. And so that's kind of where we are right now. We have to say, you know, what's the solution? I, I got to tell you, this morning was incredible. Sitting around the table with people who have gone through the, tri the trials, I thought, wait, why start crying? Just give me a minute. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know what's happened to me the last year. But all I do is cry. Anyway, so I look at, and so I, I looked at uh, that situation in Italy, and I also said to him, you know, we've got to use the highest technology of the day. Jesus rode offshore. He used the, the moisture of the, uh, the water to carry his voice on so amphitheater shaped hillside and communicated the gospel. So God wants us to use the technology and the tools, but it does always come back to a thing called discipleship. Yes. It's discipleship. Oh, somebody called the church, it's called it a church club, where you go to the church club Sunday and then you're home and that's it, that's the end of it. It's all about discipleship. I'm not here, and, and the small groups are where it happens, in the home, in the small groups, wherever they meet in the cafe. I'm not saying anything bad about a large, large church, because large church have fellowship groups. That's where people are accountable to each other. That's where they learn the gospel. That's where they test their values. And they have the leader called the Holy Spirit. They don't do what the Nicolaitans did, and that they had someone lord over them. They had they have the Holy Spirit. You learn, you know, you, you get, uh, I think it was Billy Graham, when he led people to the Lord. After a year, 10,000 people come down, only 2% stay in the church. So he began to say, just get a Bible, get your friends and, and learn. Well, I just want to leave you with this. We know the problem. The problem is we are not discipling people. That's we right. are not Absolutely. teaching them the basics. We have a series called Complete in Him. Who's God? You know who's God? You, who is not God? What is the Bible? Ask 100 people what the Bible is. What was it canonized, if they even know what that means? What is water baptism? You ever hear a sermon on water baptism? What does that mean? These are tenets of our faith. We need to know these things. Communion. What does communion mean? What is going to need me? Uh, we have a series, and I have a bunch of cards. And you're welcome to go to our website. It's free. Go and uh, download them, read them, give them out to people who need it. And uh, I was so blessed today because that meeting we had this morning, I'm not going to cry again. I'm not gonna cry. I think I'll kill it. Jesus wept. It's okay. Yeah, there you well, go. Nobody died yet here. I <laughs> hope. <laughs> Well, that's all right. We can pray for them. Boom. Put, put your cards out with Deborah on the table. I just want to leave you with this. I will. I'll do that. Uh, the fact is that what we did today, we went around the table 
we did what they need to do in small groups. Yeah. We need to do it with, with fellowship, where yeah. people have real communion with each other, come exactly. and speak. So I was blessed this morning, and uh, take this back with you. You're all leaders. Start discipling people. You can go to our website, visiblelight.org, I'll give you a call. Download these things, give them out, and uh, you know, that's Amen. it. Amen. That's visiblelight.org. Visiblelight.org.